Das ist ja die Zeit. I'm kind of excited because they're going to get quiet when I finish the fight and and when they're probably going to riot after I twerk on them. So <laughs> he said something the other week, had he say, you know, I must have looked bad in my last fight because Paddy's only taking people that look bad. I do look bad in every fight because you're sh**. You know what I mean? You're bad at fighting, lad. He comes into a fight looking not to lose. He doesn't come in to win. I come in to win. I come in to finish you. I want to rearrange your face, you little nit. You're the monkey crab. Your sure name should be, not the monkey king. To get me, me wig chopped, lad. A little trim on the hair. I've had a cut too close to the fight before. Everyone said I look like a 16th century peasant that had just then survived the harvest. But when I get it two weeks out, it starts to grow back natural again. A lot of people call it a cat wig, lad, don't they? You know what I mean? Scouts here, but like. The Americans don't get it, do they? This dude was goofy ass haircut. Might be goofy to use, lad, but this is the style. If you look at me fights, when I won by Flying Triangle in the Echo Arena, I had one of the worst haircuts I've ever had, and that was a barber lad, and he just crucified me here. Left me mum cut it for a bit. To be honest, my mum's a hairdresser, but she cuts all APs here, lad. So when she cuts your fringe, looks like you just had your haircut in jail. We've got our own style in the pool, lad. The rest of the world can laugh all they want. Don't give a flying f this little boy grew oh. his hair so he looked like him. How would you describe Paddy's hair before he goes for? He's just mixed it up himself and I just cut it. <laughs> this has got nothing to do with me, by the way. This, <laughs> this is the Paddy look. And if I had my way, the fringe would be at least an inch longer. <laughs> I'd rather my fringe be shorter than get punched in the face. <laughs> just the layers, lad. <laughs> Funny, because I went into a school the other day and he said about my hair cut, so I went, what, do you think I just get this cut, lad? This gets layers put in it. And all the kids didn't understand, but all the women teachers were laughing their heads off. The only way I'll ever do anything different is if I get cornrows. But when I'm fighting a mushroom like this, I don't need to get them. The only way I get cornrows is if I'm fighting a tough fighter where I think I could go to decision. And the fact of getting it and my hair moving makes it look worse. But this kid's getting finished in the round, so I don't need to get it done. Natalie, thank you very much for that. See us later. That's where I look the fattest, the face. I never really have a big massive belly. I'll have weighed in a week now, lad. I'll be drinking and eating food again in the week's time. I absolutely can't wait to put it on this crap. I actually want to knock him out in about three minutes. Top. People think that like, when you get to this point that you'll be doing all madness. This last week, the week before the wake up, we taper down. Last week and this week, he's been looking on fire where he's peaking. So this next week will be a little bit of a taper down, sorting his calories and his food to get ready to cut weight. And then the sessions will be like 30 minute sessions of pad work, running through fight specific stuff and working some stuff on the ground. And then he'll be fight night ready to peak and perform at the best he can perform. I just do as I'm told. If it was me, lad, I'd still spy yesterday, but that's how you get injured. People say, oh, you're going to get nervous, it's pressure. I'm like, don't feel pressure, lad. I've had a saying since I was 16. What's the point of being nervous when you know you're going to win? What is the point of being nervous when you know you're going to win, lad? There's no point. That's what I was put on this earth to do. I said, lad, I'm the youngest in my family. I was I was a mistake. I weren't meant to be born, lad. I, was, I think my mum was like 35 or 36 or something when I was born, lad. I wasn't meant to be here, but I was put here for a reason. I just happened. One. <laughs> There's only one person in the division that you look at, and it's the champion. That's Charles Oliveira, lad. I don't look at anyone in the division and think I'm on I don't even think about that about Oliveira. To be honest, I don't think, oh, because I'm not going to fight Oliveira. You know what I mean? It's funny, people comment on stuff, or oh, he's fighting him, he's fighting him, he should be fighting such and such. I've had two UFC fights that I shouldn't be fighting. Islam Makhachev and Dustin Poirier and Charles Oliveira. Like all these idiots seem to think I should be. Like you build your way up first and that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I'm building my way up. I don't need to mention anyone's name. People talk about me. You know what I mean? People are saying to me, ah, oh, you never mentioned hand sanitizer boy after your last fight. He mentioned you. Yeah, he mentioned me because I'm me. I'm the man. What about Logan Paul? Ah, oh, that's funny, isn't it, lad? Logan <laughs> Paul mentioning me. He's talking about me. Someone who's had two UFC fights. Two. Two. His brother's mentioning Conor McGregor. And then he's mentioning me. 
Where's Paddy going to go to the Sky's the limit. Whenever he wants to go. When we got involved in this, the goal was to win a UFC title. It wasn't just to get signed for the UFC, no. was it? In the past couple of months, we've had that conversation where yeah. I've been like, don't forget what the goal is, yeah? This is what we're here for. I know for the next few years, I'm going to have movie roles and all that. I know I am going to be in TV shows, I'm going to be doing adverts, but first things first, lad, I'm going to do what we set out to do when I walked into this gym when I was 15, when I had my first fight at 16, when I had a t-shirt made about someone saying, don't be scared, homie. You know what I mean? We all... We, we've always said gonna be a UFC champ. Personally, I think I'm quite lucky that I had the boom in Cage Warriors. I had all the people that just wanted to get me and go to parties, and I was going out drinking all the time, doing stupid. Shit I shouldn't have been doing partying and coming in the gym, still stinking of booze and training, and I'd still win fights. My talent was getting me there. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Some fights didn't work hard enough, and I lost because of it. And I had to learn them lessons and. What's that saying at a casino? When you're up, you don't think you're ever going to come down, and when you're down, you never think you're going to be up again. I know now what my path is. It's happening, lad. We've envisioned it, we've seen it for years. Everyone in this gym knows where I'm headed, and we're going to take over, trust me. We're at Athlete Factory, we come with Paul Reed over the weekend. This is like the last proper hard session we do, obviously. I'll be in the gym Monday morning training, and I'll be running next week and doing little light sessions, but this is the last hard session that we've got to do. Let's go! two things to it. There's one is to make sure we're simulating energy systems used within that five minute round. Secondly is there's the belief that they know like they can't be pushed that hard and they've got it in them. So at no stage within their bout can they feel that they're ever going to be tired because they've just shown what they can do. And he always smashes it because he applies himself. It's not just the energy he gives to the camp, it's the way he applies himself mentally to camp. It just like when he's in camp, he's in camp. Two more. I feel brilliant, lad. Do three, five and a half minute rounds, lad. No fight is ever going to be as hard as that. Constant weight, constant energy getting used, and this mushroom's never going to push me that hard for three rounds, lad. And he's not even going to last three rounds. So this is just energy systems in the bank for next camps because I know he's getting finished in a round. Probably spend more energy in my walkout than I do beating this mushroom. Up. Well, make it to the work. Come on, come on. This is where it matters. Next round. Come on. People think, oh, he's a fat bastard, he does this, he does that, and I'll do what I want outside the camp. No one will tell me how to live my life, but when I'm in camp, he tells me how to live my life and I do it. That's a f man. That's a round. Hey, there's a proper J off the in between of there, cut lad. Oh, this is us, yeah, yeah. Here we go, here we go. The baddie! There you go. <laughs> I don't think I've fought a southpaw before. I've fought switches. But my last two camps have been a southpaw. And I've had one of the best southpaws I can get, lad. You know what I mean? In chasing. Someone who's a, he's a fighter well to eight. He punches harder, kicks harder than anyone who I'm going to fight. Especially this little crab. And he's a better wrestler by a mile. I think Jordan Lever thinks he's gonna come into this fight and take me down and outcrapple me and I've been wrestling with this monster lad. This tank. He, he can't get near me lad. I've been in here day in, day out, two camps back to back and he works harder than anyone else I've seen. And I'm just excited to see him reap the rewards of his labor and blow the roof off the f***ing out too again. Thank you brother for everything this time man. The plan is always the same, lad. Be the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Be UFC world champion, lad. One of the best lightweights of all time, one of the best fighters of all time. People have doubted me my whole life, lad. And I love proving doubt is wrong. I have just as much love proving the people who believed in me right. At first, lad, no one really believed because I give them no reason to believe. 30 fights later, including me amateur and me pro, I give them all reason to believe, and everyone who's close to me knows where I'm going. I'm gonna make history. So, people can talk all they want, lad. Talking means nothing, lad. People sitting behind the computers or sitting in interviews talking shit can say what they want. I'm the one putting the work in, I'm the one who believes in myself, and I'm the one that's gonna do it. Simples.